I'm Sean Arnold from Brave in the Attempt, sharing a previously recorded webinar. We're going to be diving into Minecraft Education Edition Remote Learning Style. Hello everybody, uh, welcome to the Minecraft PD. Alright, so we're going to be going through Minecraft Education Edition. Uh, if you are not familiar with what Minecraft is, which is some of my assumption, uh, it's a big, big game that lots of people still play, still the most downloaded game ever. Uh, if you were unfamiliar otherwise, there is an education edition of the game that has special bonus features and things for students and ways for you to learn and collaborate with them remotely within the game. So that's part of why uh, it might be meaningful for you now to go ahead and enhance your learning and it works even remotely. So remote version of Minecraft, let's forge ahead. So I just wanna first give a heads up and how you guys doing, what's your stress level through all of this at this point? All right, so in the idea of gaming, I'm just gonna go through a couple of whys before we hit it because obviously it sounds weird to let your kids, oh, we're all suddenly gonna play Minecraft. And normally, <clears throat> if we were doing this in real world scenario in a session like this, we'd definitely be playing it hardcore. We've been definitely doing this in some other games, but uh, this isn't really cond conducive to this space. And I'm not gonna wait for you guys to download Minecraft and you know, all us join the world together right now. Uh, but I, I will walk you through everything you need to make that happen with your students. And just understand that this is from Seymour Papert, knowing that it's not about video games being easy, it's about it being meaningful. It's about it being an intrinsic connection for students. How often do you guys use your educational games with your students, right? Are we playing games in our classes a lot? But mostly, yeah, a lot, wow, a lot on the heavy end, which is maybe why you're in this session, cool. Thanks for letting me know. Just a little behind the why of it. I'm not gonna dig too deeply into this in other sessions, but if you're not familiar with the seven C's of 21st century learning, uh, these are the skills that kids are gonna need no matter what they're doing. If they're working at Google or they're working at McDonald's, if those jobs even still exist, they're need, gonna need to be able to communicate with other human beings. They're gonna need to be able to work together and collaborate and creatively solve problems and think critically. These are things gonna need to happen across the board. Minecraft is amazing in that regard, especially the creativity piece in terms of any video game out there. Uh, think of it as like digital Legos, right? You get some Legos and yeah, some people get the kits and they wanna put together the fancy Millennium Falcons and all that stuff. But there's also kids, you can just pour a bucket of Legos in front of them, make sure not to step on it. And they can create anything that their mind imagines. That's what, Minecraft is essentially digitally. And this might be something you're familiar with. People play games all the time, but maybe not all the people you're aware of. The average female gamer is actually 44, FYI. It's not some teenage kid in their basement, okay? And people are playing regularly. It may be the way they play it. It's not on Discord. It's not hardcore uh, gaming and that. It might, it might simply be Candy Crush or something to that effect. But it does provide a whole lot of benefits. I only wanna focus on a couple that are big for me, specifically because it is intensely amazing, yes, for all students equally, but especially low performing students, students who are struggling. I work in District 75, as you saw on the previous screen when I shared the agenda piece. Uh, District 75, citywide special education, um, I use whatever tool or method I think can work best for my students. And this has been one that we've used successfully for a while, even before the education system existed. Here's the big piece. Too much of education lives in extrinsic rewards and extrinsic motivations. Here's some points. Here's a grade. Here's a sticker. And I'm not saying don't give stickers. Go ahead, give stickers. I mean, without teachers, the sticker industry would shrivel up and die. But in my district, especially because BF Skinner is so huge, ABA, here's a Skittle. And we live in that world. And every study you find shows that yes, External rewards might be good in the short term for productivity for students, but it dies off in the long term. Uh, intrinsic motivation, stuff from the inside, is always way better in the long term for both retention of information and productivity, but it also, unlike extrinsic motivation, encourages creativity. Extrinsic stuff kills it immediately. So all those connections to a sense of purpose and what you're doing for you guys, it's a sense of connection to the students and all that stuff. The same for the kids, they're getting it. All right, I saw some coworkers on the screen there, some people's cats and dogs at home, that's cool. Here's the other big piece that I love about games. Uh, it takes those game overs. That same kid who's like, I give up, I don't wanna do this, this is stupid, I won't do it anymore. 
is now suddenly with Super Mario or whatever it is, falling into the pit, dying for the 12th time in a row. Suddenly they're happy to try that 13th time because they're intrinsically motivated. They're like, no, I'll jump a half second later. They're taking the information they learned from previous experiences, putting it into practice to make that better. And yes, we don't recognize that because maybe it's call of duty, but if we can tie that into certain regards this way, it, it's huge. And Minecraft does allow for so many educational ones. This is just a quick piece. I did post this sort of uh, survey in the agenda and you guys can dig into it all you want, but there are different types of gamers. And I only bring this up because it's totally tied into Myers-Briggs uh, scales and things. So there's psychology behind this. Uh, this was a little chart that I put together. But basically, know what kind of gamers your students are. Know what kind of motivations, even if you're not playing games in the classroom, what do it? Yes, those achievers might be the kids in class that were the high achievers that like to get the good grades, but that's only a small portion. And all the kids at that bottom of that grading scale are getting nothing out of that phenomenon. Meanwhile, your explorers just want to learn something new. Socializers, there's value in that. Kids who just want to hang out in class and their socialization in Minecraft. Rebels are rare. But there's good, they're the ones who want to take the game apart and figure out how it works. Not all games are equal. You can also dig into learning more about the chocolate-covered broccoli paradox. But basically, we don't want games that are like, okay, okay, do a bunch of work, and then you get to play meaningless, meaninglessly for like five, ten minutes, the toll booth kind of games. And we don't want games, uh, anybody play like uh, Math Blasters back in the day? The kind of games that are like flashcards with flashy lights. Maybe they're better than regular flashcards, but not much more. We want games that are automatically just fun and engaging, and we don't recognize the learnings happening, but we're imbued with it. Games like Dragon Box are like that too. So let's get into the Minecraft. I just want to give you some heads up because I think a lot of you are new to this. Yes, there's all this stuff about student engagement. I'm going to skip through this quickly because I want to get into playing collaborating. We can explore. There's also learner-centered outcomes in it. You can dig through this. You have access to the slides. A friend of mine, Steve Isaacs, basically says it's our issue to inform students uh, through these environments that they can model their learning, they can create. They, we don't have to make it all rote learning possibilities where it's just like yes or no, simple multiple choice answers. We can have them and give them chances to create. All right, couple keys. The biggest one, you don't have to know how to play Minecraft. You don't have to be an expert at it in any regard to use Minecraft with your students. And it's the same with all these other technology pieces we're learning right now. You don't have to be an expert to allow your students to use it effectively. You need to know enough to be able to incorporate it, engage it. You need to be your expert in pedagogy, not the expert in the tech. Trust me, the kids will be able to figure out the game piece of it well enough, all right? So a couple of the mechanics, if you're not familiar, everything in the world is a block. Even the air is blocks. Uh, in there, there's all these sorts of worlds. You will save these worlds. They'll be the ones that are essentially your files, right? Like a document would be, like a Word document you download. These are MC world files, but that's just your saved worlds. Biomes, everything in this Minecraft world in so many ways reflects the real world, which is why it has so many educational possibilities. So if you wanna learn about different environments like the tundra or the deserts and the animals that exist in those environments, and you wanna learn about farming and gardening, yes, those are all science things, but there's tons of math because everything's on an X, Y, Z axis. So many things that can be done there across content areas, storytelling, literacy, time passes in there. Of course, you can change all these settings but day and night in the regular game, when it becomes night, all these beasts and monsters come out and might hurt you and kill you. Uh, again, you can shut all that stuff down if you need to. Players, that's who you are. If you're not familiar, this is Steve, the guy. This is Alex, the girl. But inside Minecraft Education, there's a bunch of skins and kids can personalize it. And that's really kind of important because we wanna allow a chance for students to reflect their digital selves in this world because it, it's an innate part of who they are and what they wanna be. And then there's all the other stuff that goes on. We call them creatures or mobs, as well as NPCs, which are non-player characters. There's survival mode, where you could get hurt, you fall off a cliff, you die, right? If you don't eat regularly enough, you get star you starve, you might die. Then there's creative mode. I can fly around, I can just build and make stuff to my heart's content, okay? So keep those two in mind. There are a couple of other modes, but those are the key ones that we need to keep in mind. There's also things where kids might be griefing, um, if that's an issue, there's stuff you can lock down. 
Uh, you can totally control that if you need to. I'll walk you through that in a second. And the game can get really complex too. Redstone is essentially like electricity in the game. So your students could be digitally building their own internal computers inside the system. All right? All right. So let's go ahead. We'll get into the play system and I'll show you exactly how we log in. I'm going to show you. I know I said this at the beginning, just for those of you who this wasn't true for, want to pop out. But here are the systems it works on. Windows 10, Mac OS X or above, basically like 10.9 and up, I want to say. And then uh, relatively newer-ish iPads. All right. So those are the places kids can play. Again, Chromebooks, Chromebooks not yet, perhaps coming soon. You guys and the students can all log in with your DOE, Office 365. You might know them as their Google logins. It's the same. Students have access to Google and Office 365. So they can go ahead and log in with that if they have the citywide ones for them. It's just the nycstudents.net. Boom. These are two big important pieces, importing and exporting worlds. Uh, on the Minecraft education site, there's tons of already pre-made lessons, tons of pre-made worlds that already exist. You don't have to do any of this stuff from scratch. In fact, even if you wanted to start from scratch, you can start a whole scenario where you just give kids an instruction, build a house, you let them go to town, and you just go ahead and measure if they've met all the criteria you put in a rubric, hey, your house has to have this and this and that. And boom, blank world, they're good to go. But in terms of importing and exporting worlds, that's how things are essentially saved in the game. So once they sign in, they can select the world and play. I'm going to walk us through it in just a moment. And here are the controls on a regular computer. Obviously, they're a little different on a touchscreen iPad. All of this is, again, linked in the agenda. Don't feel like you got to remember any of this stuff. If you're not used to using a mouse and things to move around, it's fine. There's a tutorial world that'll walk you through it. What I will say, though, it is generally easier if there's a mouse available, at least for me personally. Although for my students, they find it way easier uh, on the iPads. I struggle with it a little bit on the iPads, but maybe just because I'm old. All right. It's called Minecraft. Two reasons. You mine and you craft. Mining is just breaking all the things and the elements in the world. You can actually do an elements add-on too, where if you're into chemistry uh, and you're teaching something as advanced as advanced placement chemistry, there's stuff in here where you can dive deep, 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 where you can break things down literally on a molecular level. Hey, let's get two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom and oh, look, water. And, and far more than that, look, well, let's create ammonia. Uh, crafting, hey, we make some stuff, right? So in it, yes, that shows like nine little windows. You got to do something special to get to nine little windows. You normally start with just four. I'll get into that in a second. But we can turn one simple block of wood that we made into four planks of wood. And then I can use those planks of wood to build more things like doors and chairs and beds and dot, 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 pickaxes, et cetera. That's all it is. Here's some basic crafting. We can cook and we can smelt and I can turn a iron ore into iron and I can turn sand into glass. Okay, this is all it is. Saving though and undoing does not exist in Minecraft. It just, it's not a thing. And here's why uh, that's okay. What you can do and what I always do is whenever a session is done, usually it was at the end of the class day, but here you could do it every 24 hours, every two, three days, whatever is your capability. Uh, export that world, go ahead and save that world on your computer or desktop somewhere or in your Google Drive. Uh, and that's like a backup in case some kid decides to go in with a bunch of TNT and blow everything up. Well, you could, you've only lost a couple of days or whenever you last regress to that. So that's essentially the save or undo feature in the game. And uh, let's go. I'm going to pop out of this. So any of you who joined that Pear Deck, well, that's about to end. So sorry, I'm gonna minimize this window. Hey, okay, here's some family and friends. And let's open up. Oh, you're not seeing that screen. Sorry, I'm not noticing. So now you see I've loaded this. You can download it. It was in the agenda. I'll post those links again for the agenda and all that stuff in just a moment. Uh, I just go ahead in here. This is where I can choose and find my right character. Sweet, pick my skin. I want to be a burly guy like that. I can adjust my settings or switch to a different account. But let's just go in and play. 
here's what's interesting. All the stuff I've created, all in my world. All right, right there. If I want to make a new one from scratch, obviously that's clear. If we're doing multiplayer, which is for remote learning, I'll show you how that works in just a moment. Or there's a whole library of built-in ones, lessons, monthly build challenges. These already exist for you and students across content areas. I will say for you guys, I'm going to recommend start with this how to play section and begin with some of these tutorials, okay? If you want to learn how to play. But for me, I'm going to go to one of my worlds that I've already uh, used and created, and it's going to be, where is it at? Here we go. This, uh, oh, no, Metropolis Town. That's what it was. All right. In truth, I've used this in amazing ways with students. And uh, sorry about that. Here's the weird thing about Minecraft when you're in it. Uh, you got to hit the escape button because as I move my mouse around, it only moves around in world. And so getting back to that mute button. So here I am. This isn't a very special world. It's just a nice little building that we put together. Uh, but we have created advanced worlds where students were designing accessible materials for people with disabilities. My students with disabilities were designing for other people with disabilities. So it was with embedded speech and features built right in. But all I gotta do, the key rule one, and you'll learn this in the tutorial, left click to break something, right click to make something or put it down. I hit my little E key and this all goes through the tutorial as well. Oop. And I can get into all the things I'm capable of making. I can look at my character. Again, knowing the ins and outs of the game right now are not key, but just knowing that I can get in here easily and access it with my students is what's great. That tutorial will walk you through the actual gameplay. I do wanna show you this though. In this world that I'm in, I have this thing that looks like a whole bunch of little faces on it. I'll zoom in and I can say, start hosting, confirm. So that way, somebody else, uh, another student can join my world. All I have to do is maybe take a screenshot of this, write it down, or even just copy this IP address and they can go ahead and join my world. I'll show you exactly how that would work. Oh, stop posting. Confirm. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. Save and exit. That save is just saving whatever you were at at that given point in time. Because if I went and joined a world and I typed in that code, the reason it's objects instead of a bunch of numbers is just so it's easier for younger kids. If they're capable, you can go ahead and hit these three little buttons at the bottom and it will go ahead and let you input the actual server address so you can uh, put students in there. All right, as I was showing in the agenda, I got a whole bunch of stuff here for you guys. Uh, you can get into advanced features all the way, including downloads on that as well, is that attendance log and session recordings so you can get these. But most of the stuff you guys are gonna want is directly on the Minecraft education site, which is also linked in the agenda, but also you could just hit Minecraft education. That's where you can download it. That's where you can join the community to learn more, or you can just find class resources and more lessons than are already embedded in there. Yes, I showed you there were a whole bunch, but there are tons more here. Hey, Minecraft Hour of Code, uh, remote learning with Minecraft. If you want something specifically related to that, it already exists there. Uh, but I, I will go ahead and, and if anybody has any burning questions right now, let's just go ahead and go into the how to play. And I'm going to go to one of those super interesting, easy tutorials, uh, create that world because it's got all this basic stuff right there. And I'm going to cheat. Don't you cheat when you do it, because you really want to learn how to do the things. Uh, but I'm going to cheat right now and oops, change my settings and change myself to creative mode so I can go ahead and fly to where I want to. All right. This is all basic stuff where you would learn how to move around. You would learn how to craft. 
Here's where you would learn how to engage in all the education edition features, learn animal husbandry, learn about farming, gardening. Oh, look, let's drop down. I'm gonna put myself back in regular people's student mode. And of course, um, if it's your world and students are joining it, they don't have the ability to do that, cheat. But I'm gonna go ahead and grab myself a camera. I'm gonna head over here and uh, grab myself a portfolio. You just went in the chest and got it. It's just an object you can get. Yep. Okay. Or there are ways that teachers can even set it up and automatically give it to students. Um, and also you can use the chest as, as a submit feature. So when they finish it, they go ahead and that chest. So let's set the camera there. Let me take a selfie first because selfies are awesome. Boom. <laughs> selfie. Let's just take some pictures of imagining some work that I'm doing. Let's say I was doing stuff with that. So now when I go over to my portfolio, I can go ahead and give these little captions. Uh, hey, whatever I want to say. When I'm ready, I can export that portfolio as a PDF and all sorts of other things. I'm not going to spend time on this, but because this is a Microsoft product, it also has immersive reader built into it. If you're not familiar with immersive reader, uh, for all your students that words and text or even speak another language, um, this immersive reader button, this little gray button down in the right corner, will automatically convert it all to other languages, will automatically read it for them, will automatically um, uh, use picture symbols and stuff if they need it, break it down by syllables. Similarly, this is the book and quill if your students are more advanced. So I can decide to add myself an image to a particular page. I can decide to add a whole bunch of text to a particular page, sign that and send it to the teacher when I'm done. So that's a way students can document their work and, and go ahead and provide it. For you. Again, my contact info if you need to reach out to me is also there on the agenda. And uh, you know, just enjoy yourselves and let your students own children know that you care about them.